The term bin places is often used to refer to ge geographical locations where many people have experienced the presence of the divine. Places like the Scottish island of Iona and the community there. Old monasteries, temples, retreat centres, pilgrimage places. Places where many people have gone seeking that connection with the divine and have experienced it. And it is hard for anyone to know whether the place ever had an intrinsic spiritual power or whether the traces left by all those people who've been there and experienced the divine have accrued there and left an atmosphere that the people coming after can feel and follow and have their own experience of connection to the divine. All the traditions that believe in a divine believe that the divine is everywhere. So some would say there's no need for this concept of thin places. The divine is always present. But there is a veil between the human and the divine, mostly knitted by human hands. And there are some places where that veil is thinner and it is easier for we human beings to transcend our limitations and reach out to the divine, knowing the divine will always reach out to us. There are thin places geographically and there are thin places in our lives. And it is these that we are exploring mostly today. There is nature which Kylie Ann spoke so eloquently about as her salvation, her thin place that allowed her to connect back with the divine when the veil had grown very thick for her. We've all had that experience of walking in the bush, feeling the, hearing the sounds, smelling that unique gum tree smell, feeling the weight of the world drop off our shoulders, feeling our breath, our breath grow slower and our problems shrink into proportion in the overall scheme of things. Feeling our creatureliness, feeling ourselves as part of nature, our natural being, our animal origins, feeling part of that landscape. We've often walked on beaches and felt the beauty around us, the smell of the ocean, the sound, the peace, seen the horizon where it appears heaven and earth are meeting. We know that we could swim out for miles and we would never reach that place in our physical body, but we know that spiritually we can find that place where our humanity can meet with the spiritual, with the divine. For most of us, those experiences of being enclosed in nature are other. Most of our life is lived in the built environment. But we still all have elements, natural elements, that are part of our lives. The element of water. We all cycle water through our bodies all day, every day. Many of us carry a bottle of water with us and we can be constantly reminded of this cycle of passing through us. The divine element of water that we take in and release all day. Water has symbolic connotations with fluidity, fluency and flow. It's sometimes talked about the flow when we're engaged in a task and we're totally engrossed. We're within our purpose, we're within our skills, and the time just disappears. We just move effortlessly through, and there's a flow to that that's a touch of the divine. And some people are so fortunate that they feel their whole lives are in that flow. They're living in tune with their purpose, and they feel every step of their lives is guided and flows. 
that is hard to achieve in the world as it is, but it is something we can aspire to, and the divine is in our aspirations too. There's the element of earth. There's walking, <coughs> taking our shoes off and walking on the earth and feeling the earth, feeling its support, but also its give, its yielding under our feet. We can garden, we can plant out seedlings with no gloves on and feel the earth in our hands, tamp down the earth around the seedling and feel our body in contact with the earth and not worry about the grime under our fingernails. The earth has connotations of being grounded, of accepting reality, the limitations of time and space within which we live having our feet on the ground, being practical when we need to, being grounded, being earthed, being centred. It can be a great source of stability to be conscious of the earth. There's the element of fire. Some of us are very lucky to have fires in our homes during the winter months, even a gas fire. Many of us have experienced gazing into a fire and being mesmerised by the movement of the flames the dynamic of the fire and fuel. But everyone can light a candle and meditate on the flame and the candle. Fire has a dynamic of energy and passion. An artist who has had to, for a time, take a job as a teacher, an art teacher, and she's writing out 240 report comments on art students and feels a long way from the passion that had lit her fire when she was younger. But she might find two hours on a Sunday afternoon and take up her sketch block and her pencil and find that passion again and it might renew her for a few weeks to be able to pass on her passion to her students and keep the light in her alive until she can be at one with her passion again. There's the element of air, another one that we all take into our bodies and cycle through our bodies every day. Many of us have learned to meditate on our breath, the breath coming in and the breath going out. Air has connotations of change. Doctors in Victorian novels would recommend a change of air. She needs a change of air. I always like that prescription. <laughs> There's the winds of change. There's a sense, the cool breeze that comes at the end of a t long, tiring, hot day and the southerly change comes through. And the sensation of the cool air on our warm faces is one of nature's delights. And also, when our lives have grown stale and we sense the winds of change, that it's time to move on in some way and the winds of change come to meet us and blow us along like a leaf in their path. These are all thin places that we are available to us all day, every day. It's just a matter of being mindful to them. The daily shower, when many of us have had an experience of a sudden solution to a problem that had eluded us, that encounter with the water every morning, most mornings. There are practices that can bring us into that thin place. Solitary, solitary practices like meditation, community meditations like gathering, here, the Christian tradition says that when two or more are gathered in the name of the divine, the divine will be here in the midst of us. And I think many have felt that here at these services. There's the practice of friendship where the divine often flickers like a flame between two people or more who are in a loving friendship. There's a saying, a friend is one who learns my song and sings it back to me when I've forgotten it. I think some of us have had that experience. And it is also an experience of the divine to be the friend who remembers the song of our friend and sings it back to them and knows when it is the moment to do that. 
There are surprising thin places in times of difficulty. Kylie Ann mentioned one of those today. Times of in illness or injury, loss and grief, or just too many things happening at once. A challenge that takes us outside of our comfort zone. Often it doesn't feel, we don't feel close to the divine in those times. We're too anxious, too stressed, too tired, got too much to do to try and resolve the problem. Often we don't feel we have a choice and those natural responses are necessary. I think I felt that here in Kylie Ann's story, that painful as that process was, that stripping away was what left her open to receive the new level of understanding that came to her. In loss and grief, it is necessary to feel the sadness. We can't be in a hurry to move on, get through this, get back to normal. When there's too much happening at once, we need to feel that adrenaline. We need to rise to the challenge. But uh, beyond a certain point, there is a choice. Kim spoke at the last service of the choice between fear and love. Or it can be a choice between anxiety and faith. As Kylie Ann said, she knew she'd been through this before and she would get through it again. And especially when we have leaned on our faith to get through, it builds our courage and our faith that our faith will draw us through again. Many of our seemingly natural impulses can block our instinct, the instinct that will show us the way through, the higher self, that has such an accumulation of wisdom, the higher self that's been awake all the years you were asleep, taking in everything, learning everything, the spark of the divine within us that is understood and named in different ways, but is available if we can make the space for it. Sometimes it feels natural to overthink the problem, to cycle it through our minds over and over again if we can just get a handle on all the issues involved in the problem, a solution will appear. But very few people ever say, you know when, I got, when it came to me, the solution to that problem, it was when I was sitting there thinking it through for the 23rd time that day and suddenly I got the answer. It's far more frequent for the answer to come when by accident or design we've created a space apart from our problem. Perhaps the thinking has helped, but it's the moment in the shower or the moment waiting for a late train when our mind has nothing to do and we're gazing into the distance and suddenly a new perspective, a new idea, a new solution comes into our mind. That's the thin place, that place of making a space breaking out of the overthinking, breaking out of what feels like the natural reaction, but opening ourselves to the divine incoming of a fresh idea, that southerly change that can come through and bring something new that will help us. Sometimes it feels natural to close in, to pull a doona over our heads and tell the world to go away, when it is better to reach out to that friendship the friend who can sing our song back to us. I remember being very anxious one time and telling a friend who shared this tendency to worry with me. And she said, why don't you do those things you're always telling me to do? You know, the breathing, the chamomile, the lavender. <laughs> and I've got so caught up in my anxiety, I had completely forgotten my own song, but there's always something you can do. And I needed my friend to sing my song back to me and remind me there's chamomile in the kitchen, there's lavender on the dresser. I can always breathe, I can come through this anxiety. There's drowning in overwhelm or there's seeking support to rise to the challenge. These are all choices we can make to seek the thin place where the divine can reach through to us or whether to just surrender to the chaos that seems to have suddenly overtaken our lives. It's very easy when there's too much to do to take the extra time we need for all we need to do out of our sleep time and the next thing, we're not getting enough sleep, our system is flooded with cortisol and other stress hormones and we're just in this soup of stress hormones and it's easy not to see. But if we can just create that little space, if we can keep up the practices 
that served us so well in normal times, if we can keep that meditation even if it's down to five minutes in the morning, if we can keep opening our minds to nature, to the elements, if we can step off the concrete path that we've put between ourselves and the divine in nature, take a little walk on the grass verge, even feeling the earth through our shoes, these little moments are enough to let the divine come through, like it did to Kylie Ann and told her that message from her higher self, this is what you need to do. I know what you need to do and I'm telling you. And to trust that voice, to know that it's speaking the truth and that you can follow it out of your difficulty. So the divine is everywhere and always close, but in thin places it's closer. We can make choices. We can put ourselves in the thin place. We can take ourselves into nature. We can become mindful of the elements in our life and their ability to connect us back to the divine in nature. We can keep up our practices. We can keep coming to our communities of spirit. We can keep up our friendships in whatever way we have time to do. We can keep in touch with our higher self. We can make our difficulties and crises into thin places. As the Buddha said, life is difficult. So if we can make of our difficulties a thin place, heaven and earth will draw close quite regularly. May we all learn to walk closely with the divine more and more of the time. May it be so. Thank you.